see. I just wanted to go live today while I am going to be recording my podcast. So it'll be a live record deal. So, hey, I wanted to talk about self-sabotage and how we're not always going to be motivated. Disregard that. (laughs) It's my dog. Um, How we're not always going to be motivated all the time to do things, do things that we know we're supposed to do or that are going to move the needle forward for us. And we have to like dive. Come here. We have to dive deep and ask ourselves why, like some days the motivation isn't there. And that's why I think it's so important to set yourself up for success in terms of like going to a coffee shop to work. If you work from home or If you need to get out of town, like what helps me is taking day trips, even if they're not long or overseas, because if I don't make that time for myself to go and explore and be in my essence and meditate and just experience life, I will end up going on a three to four month hiatus. (laughs) So it's a lot more beneficial to just occasionally take weekend trips or take a time where you turn your phone off and just relax fully, fully unplug. And another thing with, I call it the gold star deal, you know, whether it's buying yourself a new skincare product or going to get a massage or a facial or something that's going to make you feel good because at the end of the day, it's about feeling good. Now, when we get into the self-sabotage route, it is an internal dive that we get to go down. Why are we perpetuating a self-sabotage pattern? Because that is not an act of self-love. It's an act of keeping us in a safe, familiar space. Yet, are we that much more afraid of the unknown that we continue to choose the familiar path that is harming us? Ask These are deep questions to ask. I know they're not sometimes easy to, to hear. You get to sit with yourself. And the biggest act of self-love is spending time with yourself and healing. Oh my gosh. (sighs) Feeling it to my core here, my sacral. Personally, my sacral was the highlight of my healing journey. When I was a child, I was molested and I did not know what I had pushed down and numbed all the years until finally, you know, after having several health issues, hormone imbalance, thyroid, gut issues, um, poor relationships, not feeling safe to receive love. I did not know how to be okay with even receiving love from my family. There was always a barrier. And there was finally a point where I said, I have had enough. And I chose to just go on this hiatus of healing. And there was a ton of self-sabotage. And essentially it was, I lacked responsibility for myself because it was easier to stay in the familiar, oh, I'm just going to, get by or not claim myself to step up to the plate. I always and have always been taken care of from myself. Like I believe when you're in line and you are on your path and you are here, whether you're a light worker or not, you will get what you need all the time. And life is always unfolding for you. And it might not be 
exactly what you want or what you think you want, but it's what you need until you uncover some truths about how you've been operating to then expand and allow yourself to take up all the space that is here for you because the world needs you. We are all put here with a special gift. We all have unique gifts. Life has happened multiple times in the past and it's infinite in the past and the future. So your soul is so wise and you come here to uncover all of your gifts. We come here and get amnesia and we will get clues, you know, success breeds clues. Like it leaves clues, excuse me. And that's part of the journey. It's the game, the uncovering, the discovering, the inner standing. And once you fall in love with that journey, <laughs> it gets to be so fun. And it stops being about the destination. You always have your end goal in mind. And that always changes as it should because you're ever evolving, ever expanding, always finding out more about yourself and all the quirks and gifts you have. And this is also something that I help people with is lovingly removing the blocks, whether it's trauma or beliefs that are in their way so that they can fully access who they are at their core and uncover their own gifts to show and share with the world, which ultimately lets you live in your essence, your untapped potential, living life on purpose. And I have just come to enjoy the full journey, all of it, the ups and downs, the highs and lows, because without the dark, there is no light. And without the depths, you know, of feeling, I used to be so afraid of feeling. It's just so much, so much for my heart. I've got so much love. And when you crack that bad boy open, it's limitless. So I invite you to dive into yourself and ask a couple of deep questions of What am I so afraid of? Is the fear of the unknown that scary? Because the unknown is where the magic unfolds. We can't get the blessings if we are clinging to our every single day routine or old patterns that aren't serving us anymore that we are asking, being asked to let go of, to adopt our fullest self. And that looks like letting things fall away, whether that's friends, habits, jobs, moving cities. It's part of the trust, the faith in jumping into the unknown. So see where you're being asked to let go of. Where is there a little strife in your life that's doesn't feel good anymore, whether that's a job that you know you've needed to leave for some time. Oftentimes, the statistics say that we stay in a partnership or a job, you know, six to 12 months past when we would have normally left. Like we think about leaving or being done, and then we stay six to 12 months past that time when we could have just ended it early and had that much more time left for ourselves to explore. You know, I say start before you're ready, which is, it's like, a ah! I always say, okay, I'm screaming down this roller coaster, but I'm still going. So just a lot easier said than done to open yourself up to all that's for you sitting in your vortex, because when you're in that space of freedom and feeling good and ease and flow, that's when all that's for you in that space outside of what your eyes can see comes to your focal point. 
and is part of your reality. Like you will start to see that unfold. My favorite is um, Abraham Hicks. Oh my gosh, I love. If it doesn't feel good, stop doing it. And the things that we're attached to sometimes we think feel good, but it's more of a habit. So I invite you to slowly, it doesn't have to be hot and cold, just done. I always use the freight train analogy of a hundred miles one way. You can't go a hundred miles one way and then expect to go a hundred miles the other way. You can slowly slow down, regroup, and then speed up. It's about baby steps. What you, can you do today to move the needle? What's the one thing you can do today and you know that you need to do to move the needle forward? Can you do that? Can you let go of it just today and then reflect at the end of the day and see how you feel or how your day went? How would that feel, feel for you? I appreciate you all for being here. Life has its challenges, ups and downs, as I said previously. And I feel that in those ups and downs, if we can always root back to a center within our own center, because when you're on those highs, ride them and root back in to yourself who you are. So that when you're in those lows or the lows, you know how to root back in to where you are. And realize, oh, I can only go up from here. This too shall pass. I've been here before on the other side. And I always have my center. It's a great practice to start harnessing. I don't know if y'all have ever done this where you have a to-do list and then you have your two or three main things that you need to do that day. Yet you do the 10 other things on your list that aren't going to move the needle forward and still hadn't gotten to your one to three things. That is a form of procrastination, which is essentially, you know, can be seen as not taking yourself seriously or not doing the thing that's going to help you the most back to self-sabotage. I invite you to look at anything that you've done or didn't do. Have the awareness while you're looking at it and have zero judgment towards it. And instead, just list all the reasons why you love you. List all the reasons why you're proud of yourself. We often forget all the things we've overcome, all the things we've accomplished, all the reason, all the the reasons why we are so awesome. We forget. It's, it's called being human. So having a list readily available, whether that's a video, an audio recording, or a notepad on your phone, or a post-it in your car or on your mirror, listing a couple of reasons why you love you, a couple of huge things you've overcome, So that you can always see it. Reading it every morning or every night. If it's on a recording, listening to it at night. So it seeps into that subconscious. It's just a couple of tips I got for you today. 
yeah, just to try doing the few things that you know are going to help you. Do the thing that scares you, whether that's posting on social media, because at the end of the day, none of it really matters. The more you, you show up as, the more you will be received by the people that are waiting to receive you. That the people, people are waiting for you, not the facade of you, not the mask you wear, but you. The quirks, the personality, all of it. They're waiting to see you. You know, when you hold yourself back, you're essentially doing people a disservice because there's parts of you, like I said, everyone has a gift. And there's parts of you, your gift streams through you in ways you cannot comprehend. And there are parts of you that people are waiting to see, to feel, to be seen by. You can witness people through a screen, through a message, in ways you can't comprehend. And that's how we speak to each other. Our humanness, our quirks, our imperfections. Oh, I love you guys so much. I do. And I'm here to show up for you in ways that I don't even know. <laughs> I'm just here doing my human thing. And if I can help one person, that's all that matters. That blows past any type of resistance I had felt towards showing up more authentically. I appreciate you guys for listening and for doing you and taking my little tidbits, my wisdom and implementing it into your life. Well, I hope that it's helpful. As always, love yourself a little harder today. Continue showing up. Consistency will beat perfectionism any day. Even if you just do one thing today, just one. It's about showing up consistently. That is self-love. That is dedication to self. And when you have dedication to self, you have dedication to others. Because what you're doing for others comes through you. All right, guys. That's it for today. Much love. Thank you guys for listening to my short but sweet podcast. If you have any questions, comments, please shoot them in the comment section. I love chatting with you guys. And thank you for being here.